Problem number five. A piston with additional weights has been suspended on top of a cylinder containing a gas. The weight of the piston and weights is a combined 200 pounds, and the diameter of the cylinder is 0.5 meters. The ambient atmospheric pressure is assumed to be 100 kilopascals. Determine the absolute pressure inside the cylinder in kilopascals. So this is similar to the problem we answered earlier. We are looking for an absolute pressure. And remember that absolute pressure is going to contain the atmospheric pressure's contribution. That absolute pressure is the actual pressure. The relative pressure would be what a gauge would read. It would be the gauge pressure, which is the difference between the actual pressure, the absolute pressure, and the atmospheric pressure. So, we're not looking for a gauge pressure. Let's see here. We know that the combined weight is 200 pounds, that's pushing down on the piston, and the diameter of the piston is 0.5 meters. The ambient atmospheric pressure is assumed to be 100 kilopascals. Let's, okay, let's look at it this way. Let's say this was a statics problem. If this is an equilibrium, the piston isn't moving. So in order for it to not be moving, I know that the, some of the forces in the y direction would have to equal zero. So I have some force pushing down in the form of the weight of the piston and cylinder combined, and or the piston and weights on top combined, excuse me. And I know that I also have some force pushing down from the atmospheric pressure. So the force of the atmospheric pressure, if that makes sense. And then this is held up by the force of the pressure inside. So this is going to be the force of the pressure inside the cylinder. Let's call it, yeah, that, that's a logical name for a variable. So if the sum of the forces in the y direction are equal to zero, that means that the weight pushing down plus the force contributed by the atmospheric pressure are equal to the force contributed by the pressure inside the cylinder. So the weight is known, that's 200 pounds, awesome. And then the force of the atmospheric pressure could be calculated because I know that a pressure is defined as being a force applied over an area. So I could calculate the force being applied by taking the pressure times the area. So this force being applied by the atmospheric pressure is just going to be the actual atmospheric pressure multiplied by the area over which it's applied. So this is a cylinder, therefore the top, looking down from the top, that would be a circle. So this would be the area of the cylinder and I could calculate that area because I know the diameter. So I could calculate the area of a circle by taking the pi times the diameter of the cylinder squared and then dividing that by four because area of a circle is pi r squared, diameter is two times pi, excuse me, two times r. So this would be atmospheric pressure times pi over four times the diameter of my cylinder squared. This is a known, this is a known. And then the force contributed by the cylinder, the pressure inside the cylinder, is just going to be the pressure inside the cylinder times the same area, because it's still going to be a circle. So pi over four times the diameter of the cylinder squared. And again, I know the diameter of my cylinder, but I don't know the pressure inside the cylinder. That's actually what I'm looking for. However, when I substitute these back into my equation that I came up with earlier, this is weight plus pressure of the atmosphere times pi over four times diameter of the cylinder squared is equal to the pressure inside the cylinder 
times pi over 4 times the diameter of the cylinder squared. Now in this equation, I know everything except for the pressure inside the cylinder. So I can solve for the pressure inside the cylinder. So this would be pressure inside the cylinder is equal to the weight plus the atmospheric pressure times pi over 4 times the diameter of the cylinder squared, all divided by pi over 4 times the diameter of the cylinder squared. So I'm going to distribute my denominator here just to make it a little bit easier to do the math. So this is going to be the weight over pi over 4 times diameter of the cylinder squared plus atmospheric pressure. Okay, now I'm running out of room, so I'm going to write this over here. So the pressure inside the cylinder is going to be atmospheric pressure. Let's do that one first. So my atmospheric pressure was given. It's assumed to be 100 kilopascals. So 100 kilopascals plus weight, which is 200 pounds, divided by pi over 4 times the diameter of my cylinder, which is 0 0.5 meters. Like the earlier problem, it is a large piston cylinder arrangement. So 0 0.5 meters squared. This is a force, it's a weight, therefore this is pound force, by the way. So I have 100 kilopascals plus 200 pound force divided by pi over 4 times uh, half a meter squared. So in order to get this into an answer that I could add together, I would have to convert kilopascals to pound force per square meter or pound force per square meter into kilopascals. I'm going to use kilopascals. Uh, partially because the problem is asking for an answer in kilopascals, but also because that, that unit makes a lot more sense than pound force per square meter. So in order to get into kilopascals, I'm going to have to recognize that a kilopascal is a thousand pascals. And then a pascal is a newton per square meter. And let's see, I'm, this is just becoming a bit of a mess. Let's just erase this line. Yeah, hopefully this will make sense. And then I can convert from Newtons into pound force. So let's jump back to the textbook. In unit conversions for force over here, I have one Newton is equal to 0 0.22481 pound force. 22481. 22481 0.22481 pound force per newton right that's correct i think yes 0.22481 pound force per newton cool let's make this a little bit easier to read yeah, so much easier to read. Now, my pascals are going to cancel pascals. Newtons cancels newtons. Square meters cancels my square meters. So I'm left with an answer that is going to be in just kilopascals. Cool. So, what is 200 divided by pi over 4 times 0.5 squared times 1,000 times 0.22481? Let's get rid of the BH again, and we have 200 uh, divided by the quantity. Let's see, that'd be pi. Times 0 0.25 times 0 0.5 squared times 1,000 times 0 0.22481. So this is equal to 4.5309 kilopascals. 
So 100 plus 4.5309 is going to be 104. Point five three. Let's just call it five three kilopascals. So the absolute pressure inside this piston cylinder arrangement is about one hundred and four and a half kilopascals. That's a relatively low number, right? I mean, we didn't. We already had a hundred kilopascals. So the weight, this two hundred pounds of weight, is only contributing four and a half more kilopascals. That seems like a lot of weight for not much increase in pressure, right? Well, that's because this cylinder is so large. It's half a meter in diameter. So that weight has a lot of area to be distributed over. But regardless, that concludes problem five, which is the last problem on this exam. Congratulations. We've completed exam number one from the spring 2015 semester of Thermal One.